Well, team, keep it clean. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Ooh, I'm, I'm still tired from that game last night, but it was a really, really good game. Shout out to the Commanders. They did get the win, um, but was it all worth it? Because they ended up losing Terry McLaurin in the process. He shouldn't be out for too long. I think his injury was serious. They said the x-rays came back negative, so he should be straight. But um, shout out to them because they got it. Uh, and Ravens, their backups, they, they played their hearts out, but they just could not get the job done and lost in the last second field goal, and that was that. And we're going to do our post-game thoughts a little bit later on, but I felt like this this took precedent uh, over that because something that a lot of us were worried about last night, especially myself, uh, was Keaton Mitchell. Uh, when he got that injury, he got hit, and he stayed down. I said, oh, no. I said, oh, no. And I was thinking, like, we, we've, of course, all been talking about how we think the Ravens running back roster spots are going to shake out. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, and Justice Hill figure those guys are locks. But that fourth running back spot, where could it go? Could it go to Melvin Gordon? Would it go to Keith Mitchell? Would the Ravens be like, you know what, we want to go with the veteran over Keith Mitchell? Or would they be like, you know what, we want to go with the young guy over the veteran? It's been a lot of discourse over that. Now, I feel like most of us feel like it would be Keaton Mitchell over Mel Melvin Gordon. But last night, uh, we got a little scare. Well, actually, a big scare um, when he got hurt. Uh, but And I was thinking, like, man, I know how Ravens get down. We know how they operate. We've seen it in the past before. And we're going to see it this season, too, where if they want to keep a guy and they don't want to even risk him, they don't want to risk putting him on a practice squad or anything like that, but they want to keep him around, we know the famous injury stash. Oh, you sneeze the wrong way to injury reserve, you go. Oh, you looked at me the wrong way in the hallway to injury reserve, you will be. Oh, you were in the bathroom and, well, oh, you just fought it like that? Oh, no, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You going on IR for that one, buddy. That's it. But um, with Keith Mitchell, I was worried that they may do that. But we got good, no, 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 no. Ravens got great news this morning. Great news. Uh, and let's read the report from Tom Pelissero. He said, Ravens rookie, running back, Keaton Mitchell, who shined Monday night before departing with an injury. I mean, you could really say shined all preseason. You ain't just had to put money in. But anyway, who shined Monday night before departing with an injury, suffered a shoulder stinger per source. A bullet dodged for the preseason standout in his bid to make the team. And when I saw that, I was so glad. I was so happy. Uh, and I was relieved because I was really thinking, uh-oh, like... They're going to stash him. They're going to stash him. And, and it's honestly like, honestly, they still could. They really still could. But he, if he returns to practice, which he really could, um, then he, he may be straight. We, this, this thing could be straight. And you know what? What I did, because I'm no doctor. I'm no medical expert or anything like that. So I went to where all the best medical experts go to get their information to find out how long the recovery will be for a shoulder stinger. And that's Google. Anyway, it says uh, a grade one is for recovery within two weeks. Grade two is symptoms for more than two weeks and sometimes not a complete recovery. But then another article said pains from burners and stingers tend to go away within seconds or minutes, but the weakness and stiffness can remain for hours or days and then another article said burners and stingers usually subside over a few days but for those have, that have lasting pain and weakness physical therapy is crit physical therapy is critical to help stretch them out and then another one said uh burners and stinger symptoms typically occur in one arm only they usually last seconds to minutes but in some cases they can last hours days or even longer so basically it doesn't sound like it's too serious and like it would threaten him to be out of too much practice uh or even the game next week uh so we'll see we'll see but i, I thought that was great news because keaton mitchell is somebody that we want to keep around we want to keep around i know y'all probably tired of hearing me say this story but i got to repeat it because this had a big impact on me y'all did y'all did when the ravens first signed keaton mitchell I didn't know who he was. I was naive to who he was. But so many, so many Ravens fans said, hey, we, that, they, that he's going to make the roster. Ain't no way that he don't make the roster. And I was thinking like, uh-oh, here, here go Ravens fans. They falling in love. And Ravens fans love falling in love. They're going to get their heart broken. But then I watched them play. I said, oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> this is why they were head over heels when it came to Keaton Mitchell. Because he got it. He got it. 
He got something special for real, man. He really does. And you just, you, you do not want to let that go. Um, and especially, like, when you think about it, too, even comparing his situation versus Melvin Gordon. Uh, and it, this is part of the business. And, you know, GM, they, they look at this stuff for sure because this is part of the numbers, the money. Keaton Mitchell is an undrafted rookie free agent. Melvin Gordon is a veteran. While Melvin Gordon, of course, has all the experience in the world, he done played in all different types of games, he has the experience. So Keaton Mitchell is fresh, his first time in the NFL. Uh, it could be a little learning curve, could be an adjustment. I mean, so far it looks so good, but still. But uh, Keaton Mitchell is much cheaper. He's much cheaper, and it's not even close. So I don't have the exact numbers on Keaton Mitchell's deal, but an undrafted rookie free agent versus a veteran who been around the block, yeah. Undrafted rookie free agent, much, much, much cheaper. Ravens would have his rights for long, even though I, I, I just I hate that term. But Ravens would have his rights for longer. They um he's just much cheaper. And this is really uh this kind of dives into the running back market as a whole. Uh, in the state of the running back market, but with Keaton Mitchell, and another thing with him too, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, I feel like there's more upside too. With Melvin Gordon, you know who he is, you know what he's done, you know what he's accomplished, and and, and that's nothing to bad an eye at, but with Mel well, no, it's it's not 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 anything to bad an eye at. Melvin Gordon doesn't accomplish a lot in this league, but um, with Melvin Gordon, you know exactly who he is. With Keaton Mitchell, you don't fully know who he is yet. But from what you've seen so far, ooh, 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 it's nice, man. It's really, really nice. So far, so good. The the I'm in the big run that he got last night. I thought, okay, yeah, maybe like five, six yards here. But he broke off that chunk. I said, whoa, that's a home run hitter right there, man. He really is. He really is. I mean, we remember the touchdown last week, the one that didn't count, but in my book, it counted. It counted because it's out there on film. It's out there on display. The whole world so well. Not the whole world, so well, but enough people, they saw it. And he he can be for real. Now, I, and I know some people will probably be like, even though I haven't heard anybody say it about Keith Mitchell yet, but could be like, oh, Keith Mitchell, he's not even going against starters. He ain't even going against starters. Well, he's also not playing behind a starting offensive line. So imagine what he could do if the quality – uh, of the offensive line that he was around and that was blocking for him was upgraded if it was better yeah he'll be going against better defenders but that's why you got the better tight ends and better wide receivers blocking for you on the outside so i'm excited for keaton mitchell and i really do believe that as of right now as of these first two preseason games that fourth running back spot should be his it should be his it's, 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 it's his I don't think it needs to go to anybody else. I don't think it should go to anybody else. And that's, of course, no offense to Melvin Gordon at all. He's, of course, a professional veteran and been around in this league and done his thing uh, for the Chargers, for the Broncos a bit too. But I, I just feel like Keaton Mitchell, he's, he's shown so much. Melvin Gordon ain't been bad now. Melvin Gordon ain't been bad, but I feel like for Melvin Gordon's role, that could be Gus Edwards. Like that more physical back that – Short yardage back And hold up now Gus Edwards just not a short yardage back I believe his average Throughout his career Is still over 5 yards per carry I believe But he, he not just a short yardage back But For Melvin Gordon's role For what he's done What we've seen in the preseason from him I think that Gus Edwards could have that covered all day So you got J.K. Gus Justice And Keaton and Keaton's special team guy, too. Again, you saw him on the kick returns. Now, with Devin Duvernay, would they – I don't think they would take him out of that role, uh, especially because I feel like his role could possibly diminish a bit uh, as a wide receiver because last year he was wide receiver, too, for a while, a little while. Of course, Rashad Bateman was one. Devin Duvernay was two. Then Rashad Bateman got hurt. And then they were like, oh, man, we don't know how to use Devin Duvernay. Ravens were lost on how to use Devin Duvernay. It seemed like they had always been lost on how to use Devin Duvernay. They just had him as a jet sweep king. Y'all know already. But this year, um, with Odell Beckham Jr., with Rashad Bateman, with Zay Flowers, with Nelson Aguilar, 
Devin Duvernay gonna get his snaps, but it just, in my opinion, I don't think it's gonna be nearly as much as it was last year. So that could really help him secure his spot uh, as the, their top special teamer, like their kick and punt return man, like he has been for the past couple of years. And I remember um, just going back, like Devin Duvernay actually took that from James Prochet. The punt return, because he had been the kick return guy for a little while. They they alternated between him and Justice Hill a bit, but then they ultimately gave it to Devin Duvernay. Then, or maybe Justice Hill was in when Devin Duvernay was hurt. Um, but anyway, Devin Duvernay has been a kick return guy for a while, but before the punt return guy used to be James Prochet, if y'all remember. I'm sure y'all do. And what I would always say when James Prochet was a punt return guy, I was like, oh, they, they want somebody – with safe hands, with, with, with the safest hands on the team. I, I would always say it back then. The James Prochet had the best hands on the team back then. Um, and we're gonna talk about James Prochet later too. But uh, yeah, Devin Duvernay. Um, they. But I feel like with James Prochet, there would just wouldn't be that explosive punt return. It wasn't a possibility for an explosive or a big punt return. With Devin Duvernay, his hands are really safe. I feel like James Prochet's hands were better back then. Um, but with Devin Duvernay, yeah, there's a tiny, tiny bit more. Of it, but Devin Duvernay was somebody who ain't dropping in college either. Him and James Rochet, they did not drop in college. They were not droppers of the football at all. Um, but with Devin Duvernay, you had more opportunity for a big play with him back there because he was more explosive than James Rochet. And then eventually, I don't remember if James Rochet got hurt or they just ended up making a switch, but something happened, and Devin Duvernay took over the punt return responsibilities. And he ain't looked back since. But now with Keaton Mitchell coming on the scene, could Keaton Mitchell push Devin Duvernay for return responsibilities, especially a kick return? Maybe, 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 because that could help. Uh, like if the Ravens were to keep him, because that could help them feel like th that they justified their uh, their decision in keeping him, like if they gave him kick return reps or something like that. Uh, because the roster spot, as we know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough making these calls. Because you got 53 spots. You got 16 on the practice squad, too. But the practice squad is not safe. Like, because anybody could take anybody from your practice squad and put them on their team. But as far as the roster, 53 spots, and that's it. No more, no less. So you got to make some wise decisions. But I think keeping Keaton Mitchell on the, on the roster, in my opinion, I think that would be a wise decision for the Baltimore Ravens. But I'm glad we got this great news. And um, let's, uh, let's see how things go, man. Let's see how things go from here on out. I uh, got one preseason game left on Saturday against the Bucks in Tampa. So in Florida, them Florida Ravens coming back home. Uh, but, yeah, it should be fun. But I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. And just like I'm glad Keaton Mitchell won't be for too long, we out.